Hello and welcome to the third and final presentation in our series, Transition to Academia, First Steps for Future Faculty, hosted by the American Council of Academic Physical Therapies, Student Leadership Development Committee. My name is Kenny Wessel and I'm currently a practicing orthopedic specialist in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm an APTA certified clinical instructor and like many of you are or will be, I'm on my journey to making the transition in between the clinic and then academia. The speakers and presenters of the Transition to Academia series are all members of the Student Leadership Development Committee for ACAP and have no conflicts of interest. Data used in all presentations is from the Commission on Accreditation and Physical Therapy Education, CAPTI. And CAPTI bears no responsibility for the interpretation presented or conclusions drawn based on analysis from this data. For the third session, the learning objectives are listed below. Upon completion of this third and final session, Attendees will be able to articulate the importance of work culture, differentiate between a resume and curriculum vitae, and set smart goals for their first steps to transition from the clinic to the classroom. The session outlined for today is talking about work culture, teaching philosophy, resume versus CV, and then taking the initial leap, taking those first steps to actually get our foot in the door in the classroom. Today, we're gonna to start by discussing work culture and teaching philosophies. We can all agree that no matter what profession you are in or whether in academia or the clinic, work culture is an important aspect, not only for the student's growth and success, but for your own mental well-being as well. It is always important to understand the environment you are going to be joining and ensuring that you will need to feel valued as well as make an impact on the institution as well. When joining a new institution, there are many important aspects to consider. This list is not an exhaustive list, and there are countless other considerations that can be more individualized to each person, each clinician, each teacher. When joining a new program, it is always important to have a clear understanding of the faculty expectations. From the information in the presentation one and two, there are clear expectations in the three pillars of academia. What is the curriculum structure? Is it a program with a backloaded long-term clinical experience? Is it lecture-based? Is it inquiry-based learning? What is the social aspect of the faculty and the program itself? How is the leadership management, diversity of the program, the utilization of adjunct faculty? And are you expected to have an open door policy? And does the program director have an open door policy for you as a new academician? All cultural aspects should also be weighed and evaluated to ensure the success for us as clinicians as well as the students who we are aiming to prepare and better our profession for the future. Another aspect of making the transition to academia is to determine and continue to build your own teaching philosophy. Just like our treatment philosophy, our teaching philosophy is developed through self-reflection and using our skill in metacognition. What are our objectives? What is our delivery method? How will we assess the outcomes of our assignments? It is also important to always learn and reflect on salient moments in our teaching career, whether that's as a clinician, whether that's as a clinical instructor, adjunct faculty, etc. Our teaching philosophy should be written in the first person, reflecting values and beliefs about teaching within the physical therapy profession. It should also approximately be one to three pages long and provide concrete examples of how you have or plan to implement your methodology. Another important aspect in making our transition from the clinic to the classroom is preparing a noteworthy resume and CV and knowing the importance and differences between the two. A resume should be more of a highlight reel. It's a big picture snapshot of what we bring to the table to be hired by a program. Our resume will include what clinical experience we bring to the table. That should be sufficient enough to provide proficiency and expertise in aspect of physical therapy to adequately prepare doctoral students for the future. The resume will also include foundational and continuing education, proving to employers and programs a passion for learning, for growing, a commitment to the advancement of the physical therapy profession. A resume will be more focused on skill. It's short, one to two pages that highlights your work in education. Think of it like a highlight reel for a high school football player trying to get recruited. A CV is geared more towards promotion within a program. 
a longer and more detailed explanation of your work towards the three pillars of academia, scholarship, service, teaching, as well as your clinical experience. In a CV, you'll be more detailed on specific research projects you've been a part of, a more detailed explanation of your progression, not only as a clinician, but as an academician. Your CV will be credentialed based and the length of it will be variable depending on your experience and your progress within the three pillars of academia. At the end of this presentation, we will have a link to the CAPTI recommended format for the academician CVs. All right, but if you're like me, you're now at the place of, okay, I see the first steps, intangible things that I need to do to transition to the classroom, but how do I actually take this leap? First, we need to examine, are we actually ready to make this leap? Um, we all have extracurricular circumstances that need to be considered and weighed before taking our first step. Some of these include, we need to continue to make money. I mean, like we can't just drop everything, not make money, and then go try to become a, an academician. And so we need to have a plan to pay off our loans, provide for our families. So I'm working full time. Depending on your location, there may not be that many programs either. If there are local programs, there may not be an immediate need for help. We should also take a step back and realize if I don't enjoy taking students as a CI, is making the transition to the classroom an appropriate move for me? If it's not, that's not a negative thing towards you or to say anything about you as a person. Your contribution to our profession may take another outlet through our work as a clinician or other opportunities with local chapters or sections. It's also vital to consider if there is any research ongoing at your institution that you can participate in or that you're passionate about as well if you don't have your specialization in a certain area of practice. Many academicians have their specialization and teach their specialization and experience. These are all important aspects to, to consider when making your jump into the world of academia. Another vital part of making our transition into the classroom is finding a mentor and developing a mentor-mentee relationship. One of the greatest aspects about the academic environment of physical therapy is that most people in academia are passionate about growing not only the physical therapy profession, but also building fellow faculty members and growing physical therapy education. It's also important to remember that a mentor-mentee relationship is a two-way street, and you should always be asking to help your mentor and provide any feedback to help them grow as well. Common mentee questions experienced faculty members here include, how do I find a mentor who I can, or who can I use as a mentor? How do I go about asking somebody to be my mentor? Am I limited to just one person or can I have multiple mentors? Can I be friends with my mentor? And what are the expectations of this relationship? I'll use myself as an example of the mentor-mentee relationship. Daniel Dale, the speaker and presenter for the second session in this series, has been a mentor of mine since I graduated from Mercer University's DPT program. During my time as a student physical therapist, Dr. Dale was a constant outlet for advice within my academic growth, as well as leadership growth within the program student organization, as well as the national APTA. When I began my orthopedic residency in teaching was an expectation for completion. I immediately asked Dan to participate in the Mercer's mock House of Delegates. Although the mock House of Delegates was not orthopedic specific, I was getting experience with other classes and competencies. And Dr. Dale understood my passion and goal to eventually make the transition to the academic world. After our lectures and mock house of delegates, Dr. Dale provided feedback on room for improvement and tidbits about the nuances of teaching. Dr. Dale continues to be a mentor as we work together on the student leadership development committee and remain in touch throughout the year. When making the transition and getting our foot into the door into academia, we must continue to self-reflect and have SMART goals to work towards. Most of you should know what SMART goals entail, but as a reminder, these need to be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based goals. For your own SMART goals, pick something that's relevant to your own goals, your own values, and your own teaching philosophies, as mentioned above. 
For example, let's say in lab, you have a specific technique you wanted to teach. After going through the teaching portion, how are you assessing yourself that students understood you? Constant self-reflection and evaluation is needed here to see if what you did is achieving your own goals. There are multiple ways to get your foot in the door and to build connections and make this transition to academia. As physical therapists, we have expert knowledge in kinesiology, anatomy, physiology, and a great understanding of the rehab process and the different rehab professions, all of which are potential opportunities at a local community or undergraduate institution. We can also inquire about potential guest lectures, volunteer opportunities, lab assistants, examiners for lab practicals at local PT or PTA programs. One of the most underrated and a very fulfilling experience into the teaching world is through clinical education. Don't bypass the opportunity to be a CI. That is hands-on education, eight hours a day, one-on-one -on -one education. That is teaching experience. Being a clinical instructor is making the bridge from being a clinician to an educator. Clinical instruction should not be overlooked and is truly a one-on-one -on -one teaching experience with doctoral students within a program. As a CI, continue to keep records of student evaluations, frequency of instruction, as well as a continue to build a rapport with DCEs and site clinical education coordinators. Continuing to grow as a clinician and academician, we should consider pursuing further qualifications to progress in the academic realm of physical therapy. These can include PhDs in relevant areas, EDDs if higher education leadership is a passion of yours, as well as the specialty certifications. For example, although I've achieved my OCS, I'm pursuing a graduate certificate in anatomical sciences for being an anatomy lab instructor. That may not only be for physical therapy programs, but could allow me to gain experience teaching through undergraduate physician assistant or nursing programs. For further information, I highly suggest watching our part one series provided by Dr. Peterson, where she goes more in depth about different terminal degrees within the realm of academia and how those fit into transition from the clinic to the classroom. Now, we're finally at our last slide and potentially your first step, create your action plan. First, define your why and define a specific end goal. List the steps you need to take to achieve your SMART goals. Prioritize tasks, add deadlines. Identify the resources, mentors, and further qualifications to make your goal achievable. Visualize your plan, whether through a flowchart, Gantt chart, or a table. Continue to monitor, evaluate, and update your action plan because life doesn't always go according to plan. Treatment plans don't always go according to plan. We've got to be able to roll with the punches and adapt. Closing this session and our series, you have now learned about the considerations you must take, how to take a leap to academia, steps to take to get started, and how to create your action plan to reach your end SMART goal. We have listed our resources here and in the slide before. We hope you enjoyed this presentation, and if you have not, we encourage you to listen to the first two sessions in the series to learn more about CAPI standards, faculty requirements, and the three pillars of academia in greater depth. Good luck in all of your endeavors on your journey to academia. I hope to see you out there.